Welcome back to our Halo map retrospective. We got Halo 2 this time, and we're going to be touching upon all 23 maps, I believe. So, we're going to be starting with Ascension. Ben, why don't you kick it off? Ascension is basically a mid-sized level that had some random large things involved um, that they, they clearly changed them when they redid the level. Um, but the first time, it even had a Banshee on it for no reason, which made... The games that were played there kind of ridiculous, and it kind of seemed uh, a bit overpowering. They had uh, pretty much every power weapon they could fit in the level, and uh, I, I really didn't like it very much when one team would get all of the weapons at one time and just dominate the rest of the game. It seemed like there was no coming back after that happened, and uh, that along with just your basic two, uh, two what do they call it, uh, bases... Um, I don't know. It, it was a little, a little bit complex, but still that same, just two bases and a Banshee is basically all I saw in it. I would give it, um, maybe a, a six. I don't really want to see it again. I've seen plenty of it with the remakes they did. I'm done. I don't want to see it again. Six. All right. Personally, I really enjoyed Ascension. I thought it played small teams and free for all well. I didn't really care for... I mean, 4v4 was probably a little bit much for me. I think it played better 2v2 or maybe like a six-person or six-person free-for-all. But it definitely was a lot of fun. It was really interesting with the Banshee. I don't, I don't know if I liked it, but it was crazy to have something like that on a smaller level, small to mid-sized level, and it was, it was still fun to have. It had great weapon balance, I thought. Uh, with the two snipers, definitely helps. I mean, if one team gets a hold of both snipers, yeah, you're in for some trouble. But having having uh, two snipers definitely helps keep balance if each team gets one. Um, it is to have. It is like the first map, in my opinion, to have the first man cannon, which is kind of interesting. Just gonna throw that out there. But all in all, I really enjoyed Ascension. I thought it played pretty well, so I'd give it a six as well. It's not something I really care to see again at this point, but it was still I wouldn't be I wouldn't be disappointed if I saw it again either. It was fun. Personally, I thought Ascension was a a great team versus team map. It had a perfect combination of both sides. Even though one base was clearly more dominant than the other, the other side made made do with all the pathways that you can move around on different levels to get to the other side. It was also a very good map for custom games, which featured one of my favorite, Tower of Power, which we all played very well. Um, I mean, personally, Ascension, it's pretty memorable. I mean, it may not be one of the best, but it definitely sticks out in your mind. You can think of some good matches that you had on that map. It's, I'd probably rate it maybe an 8. I could see it again. If I never saw it again, I'd, I wouldn't really miss it. Oh, well, well, that's a little disappointing, because I thought Ascension was a workhorse, and I rated it an 8 as well, but that's because I want to see it again. Um, I thought it was very good for all sorts of game types, you know. If you want to play Slayer, why not play it on Ascension? CTF, how about Ascension? Uh, as Ben brought up, the Banshee can be a little overpowered, especially if the guy with the rockets is flying the Banshee. That pretty much just leaves you to throw plasmas at him. But I, I thought it worked well for pretty much every game type. Even games like Crazy King were great on Ascension. Um, I thought it was very solid. I liked the different levels and pathways you could take. Give it an 8 out of 10. All right, cool. Uh, let's just wrap up all the ratings. I, ben, what would you give it? 6. All right, I gave it a 6 as well. Austin? I gave it an 8. And Matt? Gave it an 8 as well. Cool. All right, next up we got Backwash. This time I'll start. 
Backwash to me is a very unique map in setting wise. The whole swamp setting never was done in Halo 1. I don't even think it's done in any of the other Halos so far. And it's it's got atmosphere to it. It really like the sounds and the visuals are really cool, I like the fog and all that. But the whole fact that you don't start with grenades is really disappointing. And I know it's hard to fault the map for that because it's not the map design itself, but it is the only map, to my knowledge, that is like that. So you almost kind of, any game that you play on Backwash, if I can remember, didn't have grenades. And that's a little disappointing because I love to use grenades and I think they're, you know, really tactical in Halo and important for its gameplay. So, but in general, you got one base in the center. It's a smaller map and it played well for like Predator and stuff like that. But other than that, didn't have a whole lot of game type variety that I could see being fun. I think it's a free-for-all map for sure. I would not want to play teams really on this map. But free-for-all, it, it can be fun. It has its moments, but it's not something to write home about. So I'd probably go with... I'd probably go with uh, a 4. I'm going to go with a 4 for Backwash. Alright, Austin, what do you think? Personally, Backwash was one of my least favorite Halo maps that's ever existed. It to me felt like a map that wasn't really about strategy it was who was the first person to catch the other person off guard it was it was clearly a free-for-all map but in a map where it's just who can see the other person first or who hides in a spot who they, they're the one that gets the kill and that to me that's that's not really any skill that's just who's got more luck also i mean the people that got the rockets or any of the other weapon, the power weapons on there, they were the ones to dominate it, clearly, but I think that was just because it locked people in a small map with very, very lot of cover that just ran in between, in and out, dodging bullets. I mean, to me, I'd, I'd probably rate it if a two or three at most. Which because, one? I'd probably have to go with three just because it was interesting. I liked the swamp, and it's never been done before. I just, I didn't enjoy gameplay on it. I can't think of a single time I ever had fun on Backwash. Okay. Well, a three, I, I thought I was being harsh on it by giving it a four. Backwash was a map that you start off on it, you got the ambiance, you got the monitor running around making noise, you got the noise of the swamp. It looks pretty unique, and then it plays like shit. Um, it's great for Juggernaut, which is weird because there's not many maps you can say, oh yeah, that's a Juggernaut map, but this is it. And that's about it. That's what it's good at. Uh, starting off without grenades throws people off. And I know there was plenty of times when we were playing, I was trying to throw grenades when I didn't have any. And I would do it every single time without fail because all maps have it. So it's just weird that that's the map default. Um, and another thing, it, it can be kind of hard, especially playing on split screen, but that might be a split screen problem. Uh, kind of hard to see where you're going sometimes. Uh, the fog can get pretty dense. And because of that, this was actually the only map to ever be removed from matchmaking by Bungie. So, I mean, if Bungie wants to remove it, I don't know if I can even rate it above a 5, so I gave it a 4. All right. Backwash, to me, wasn't a great map. Uh, a very simple design, the big base in the middle, but it also had uh, enough unique things. The trees and the, if you can call them that, I'm not, I mean, they had the weird fog, the, the guilty spark flying around. That kind of thing was, was great. I love what they tried to do. And the creepy noises that happened all the time. Uh, the fog went with it. Um, competitively, the map was strange. It, it was clearly for free for all. There's no base or, or there's not two bases that two teams could could start at and that kind of thing. It, it's but it was also pretty even. It had uh, just a couple of heavy weapons around the map. Nothing nothing that really dominated, and so it kept it fairly even throughout. I think. Uh, it's not something I want to see again, but I wouldn't mind seeing that same um, swamp back in another another way. Maybe a different uh, location in the swamp wouldn't bother me. The fog didn't bother me that much. I don't think it should have been removed or anything like that, but I don't know if it uh, should come back again. I think I would rate it at maybe a 5. Alright, so I gave it a 4, Austin. I gave it a three. I gave it a four. I gave it a five. Okay, so we got a four, a three, a four, and a five. All right, cool. So far, backwash. Eh. 
let's start off, or let's go with Beaver Creek and Austin. Start us off. Beaver Creek to me is one of the most iconic maps of the game. It clearly it's uh, I believe the smallest, and it's great for flag captures or any objective type game. To me, the close proximities of the base just it's constant combat. You really don't get any downtime. The person that gets the sniper may get about 10, 15 seconds of getting a shot off before everybody knows that he has a sniper and is going after him instantly. The placement of the overshield in the bottom corner, again, everybody knows where that's at and everybody's always running to it. Give them a short time to kick some butt before, again, the close proximity, you're getting pounced on by the entire other team. Yeah, it may make for some hectic combat, but it's also very interesting. You're never going to be bored on Beaver Creek. I also really enjoy the teleporters and the close proximities of the sticky grenades to the teleporters. You run through, grab them, or somebody else is waiting for you to get you right off the bat. I also really enjoyed how you could get on top of the base and drop down into right on top of the flag. Grab it and try and make it out the door before somebody shot you in the back. I can't really think of a lot of other maps that have done this, and it just it made for some interesting combat because you had two really important ways into the base, but a lot of people also forgot about the the uh, the hole in the roof, and it just you weren't watching it. You could easily get jumped, and that'll quickly turn the tide of a fight. I would probably rate it maybe uh, seven. It was it was iconic, but you know, I've seen a lot of uh, remakes of it. Okay, cool. Well, Beaver Creek. Um, I don't know if there's much I can say besides what I said for Battle Creek for Halo 1. The difference in this one is that they replaced the ladders with ramps. But as we all know, this is great for capture the flag and assault. Team Slayer, not so much unless it's double team. Free for All, of course, is really great on this map. And when it comes to giving it a score... Uh, when you're talking about 8, 9, and 10s, you got got to kind of nitpick. And over its Halo 1 predecessor, it didn't really make many changes. It almost looked exactly like the same map, again, besides the aforementioned ramps. So I'm going to give it an 8 rather than the 9 I gave it in Halo 1, but a solid 8 out of 10 for Beaver Creek. It doesn't leave anything uh, memorable to me. I don't want to see it again. I'm honestly surprised they made it i i guess they had to because they weren't working with a lot with the halo one maps um i don't know i wish they would have done sidewinder instead um I, i'm sure they they had their reasons for not doing it but i definitely don't want to see it again in halo 4 i don't want to i mean i don't even want to see people that remade it in forge world <laughs> and and that's saying something i mean you can make pretty much every map if you want to that's not one I would even pick up if I could. Ones I looked for, I mean, like Lockout and, I don't know. Um, Beaver Creek just wasn't one that I was looking for at all. Um, I could go on and, and forget this map. I think it was great for its time for Halo 1. And for when I was playing with just the people I could find around me or System Link, yeah, it, it fit. Now that I, I can just jump into a party and have up to 16 people... No, I, I don't want to see it again. Uh, five. Okay. Uh, to me, Beaver Creek is an improvement upon Battle Creek from Halo 1. Uh, like you said, the only real noticeable changes that I can think of is that you can drop down into the base through uh, the top little window that they have and also the, the ramps replacing the ladders. And both of those do help gameplay, and they do offer a better, smoother experience. So, I mean, I, I like Battle Creek, and I like Beaver Creek. It plays really well for Capture the Flag and Assault. I mean, n nothing else really to my mind comes to mind that it plays well with. It plays everything okay, but those two modes are a lot of fun, and it plays best 4v4 or smaller. So, yeah, I, I have no complaints about Beaver Creek. I think it was fine. Not a whole lot of improvements, but usually with remakes, you don't have a whole lot changed, but the changes they made were necessary for a better experience. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. All right, let's recap it. Austin, what'd you give it? Uh, I believe a 7. Matt? I gave it an 8. Ben? A 
think a five. All right, and I gave it a seven. Cool. Let's move on to Burial Mounds. Well, Burial Mounds is something that I think a lot of people don't appreciate very much. Is It's a really good asymmetrical map. Um, it's got one big base and then just this area where the other team starts. And it's really great for games like One Flag and One Bomb, where you're basically starting with out a quote-unquote base and you're going into the enemy base to either take their flag or arm the bomb. That being said, those are the only two game types that I think are really great on that map. Slayer passes, but it's definitely not as fun as One Flag and One Bomb. Um, and, and given that, the overall color scheme of it was just so bleh. It was just brown and gray, which I know I was like a broken record with Halo 1. And with Halo 2, hey, I made it four maps in without mentioning the color scheme. But holy crap, I did not like the color scheme. So it, it was great for two game types, passable for another. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Burial Mounds, to me, uh, was a little bit unique. It had uh, it had those random tunnel-like things that weren't quite complete. Uh, I guess that might be what they're talking about with the burial something. I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, as you said about the uh, one flag and one bomb being the, the only game types that really work for it, I completely agree. But you can tell it's designed for that. And... Uh, I think it did work very well. The only problem I had with trying to do those types of games is because the uh, the attacking team started with no base, no real defenses because they assume you're going to be on the offense, uh, it was kind of easy for uh, a good team on defense to get all the power weapons and then just spawn camp. And then it's just embarrassing. Even if you're good at the game and you get stuck in something like that, it, it just took all the fun out of it. I, I couldn't enjoy a game after that started to happen, and there didn't seem to be anything I could do about it. Um, as for things I want to see brought back from this map into another map, I, I don't want to see the exact same thing, but of course I want to see asymmetrical maps with a, a base and, I guess, an attacker's open area, but maybe if they wouldn't have made it quite so one-sided uh, once the weapons were taken. I would probably give it a 6. Okay. Burial Mounds, to me, like you guys said, is great for one flag and assault, so I'm not going to really repeat what you guys said. I agree on all accounts for what game types it's great, or what game types it plays really well and what it doesn't play well or what it plays okay. Um, I agree that the weapons definitely can be abused once you get the few power weapons that are on there. You can definitely put some hurt on the attackers if they don't have it. So you can just sit in your base and defend with the sniper, you know, the the rockets and sword, etc. So yeah, that's that's a problem, and I would like to see that changed as well if they ever brought this map back or anything like that. But and also, I just want to throw out that it is fun getting out of. I mean, not that that really plays to a map's favor or how great it is, but it was tons of fun getting out of. So a lot of great memories on burial mounds in that regard, and it was a lot of fun. In like a big team battle map, but this isn't the map that you really wanted to play. When you when you play big team battle, you're never. I mean, burial mounds is fun in rotation. Like if you bring it up once every maybe 15 games, it's it's enjoyable. But it's not something that you keep wanting to play over some other maps offered in Halo 2, especially the big team battle maps. Which there's tons of big team battle maps in Halo 2 that are really good. As for 4v4 maps, yeah, it it, it shines a little better there, and it probably is more enjoyable in that regard. So Burial Mounds, I will be giving a 6 out of 10. Burial Maps is a very memorable uh, custom game map to me. A lot of uh, 4v4 were very good. Getting out of the map was entertaining. I mean, everything that's already been said about the map, it's very true. Assault, I mean, there's not much you can say about Burial Mounds. It's a great map. It's one of the memorable ones to me. I would give it probably an 8. Okay, cool. All right, well, let's recap. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, let's recap. Matt, what'd you give it? Show me a six. All right, Ben? Six. I gave it a six as well. And Austin? I gave it an eight. All right, so we gave it the devil's number. <laughs> so we gave it the mark of the beast, so we're obviously going to hell. Um, yes. All right, well. I'm already there. <laughs> yeah. 
Next up is, uh, well, this is going to be an awesome map to talk about. Let's go to Coagulation, Ben. Um, coagulation. It, it's Blood Gulch. It's, it's, uh, it's Halo. It, it always has been, in my opinion, it always will be. There's not too much more I can say about it if, if, uh, if you heard what I said about uh, the Halo 1 one. It's the same thing. It, it didn't change, and I actually love that about it. I love that they actually brought back the map pretty much exactly how it was. Everything I liked about it, everything that I wanted to see. I mean, it works really well in every game mode I can think of, except maybe free-for-all, things like that. But team objective things, team slayer, it's all, it's all there. Uh, I'm still going to give it a 10. Cool. Um, yeah, Coagulation, a great map. I have so many memories on this map. Awesome for multi-flag, neutral flag, one flag. I mean, it plays any variation of flag or assault really well. You can't go wrong in any regard. Like, some play, you know, one flag really well, but they don't play neutral flag, obviously, the asymmetrical ones. Some play uh, two flags really well, but not neutral flag. I mean, this just does it all so well. Slayer is, you know, give or take. If you enjoy Slayer, you'll probably like it on here, but it's not something that the Slayer hardcore players are really going to be like, let's play Slayer on Coagulation. You're not going to find that. But if you love objective game types, even Territories or King of the Hill can have its fun moments in this on this map. So, yeah, definitely recommend this map. I love the changes made from Blood Gulch. The, they, were, they were awesome changes, adding in the caves and stuff like that. They changed it around a bit, I guess. And the rocks, et cetera, et cetera, in the center and on the side definitely help for cover. So, yeah, I, this is better than Blood Gulch, in my opinion. It works so well for the game types it's made for. So, yeah, I can't recommend this one enough. I'm going to give this one, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Coagulation is the signature Halo map, but not because it earned it. Coagulation is famous for the Blood Gulch Chronicles of Red vs. Blue. The game personally is beaten to death. It is in every big team battle nearly. It is always the map that everybody wants to play. It may be... It's good for the fact that it's big and it's wide open spaces and you can have a lot of screwing around in it, but personally I just think the map just beats you to death. It's giant heavy weapons. It's giant vehicles. It's sniper rifles with a ton of open field that people that just sit on the other base and just snipe you and you can't get near them. I mean, yeah, there are the caves and stuff, but anybody that's even half paying attention will see you and pick you off right away. The game is memorable, or the map is memorable, but personally, I just, I'm tired of coagulation. I understand why they want to keep putting it in and I won't cry if they do continue to put it in. I just, I'm... I'm done with it. I think we need a new signature big map. I personally, I would, I'd rate it maybe a six just cause I'm, I'm done with it. I, I don't want to see it anymore. Wow. <laughs> uh, coagulation for me. I, I think a lot of people wanted to play on coagulation mostly because it works so well for everything. Big team, big team slayer, big team assault, big team CTF. Heck, even like territories worked really well on this, and I, that's why it was such a staple because it was just all reliable. You could do pretty much whatever you wanted to, so long as you had eight v eight. And for me, um, like I said before, the eight, nine, and tens, I kind of nitpick a little bit. And going with Beaver Creek, I would knock it down to an eight uh, away from my original nine that I gave it in Halo One, but it added things like cover and balancing the teleporters, especially. So, so the, it wasn't just a copy and paste. They improved it. And so I gave it a 9 out of 10 as well. All right, cool. Let's recap them. Ben? 10. I gave it a 9. I gave it a 6. And Matt? And I also gave it a 9. All right. Well, let's move on to Colossus. And this time I will start. Colossus, I, I really... Man, Colossus is a ton of fun for both Slayer and Capture the Flag. And that's kind of hard to pull off in its own right. A lot of map. I mean, one thing I will mention is that it adjusts for each type, and not a lot of maps do that, to my recollection. 
where they changed from capture the flag to slayer, they changed something about it. And in this case, the bridge. The bridge is not there for capture the flag, otherwise that'd be extremely easy. But in Slayer, it works because it helps you get from base to base or side to side on the top parts or on the outside layers a lot easier. I also loved how in the earlier versions before they took it out, I believe, they the whole bouncing the flag off the conveyor belts onto the other side was a strategy and I thought it was kind of neat. It was an exploit of the game, a glitch, but it was still cool. And I love the whole conveyor belt system. You know, I, I think that's a cool concept to have on a map. So having the boxes start on the very top layer, drop out from the ceiling basically, go down and drop even further, and then all the way till they get to the bottom and having conveyor belts going in multiple directions, all the way to the end where the overshield is in the middle of the the very back side of the wall next in between the bases, and having the overshield right there on this with two holes right in the side with boxes. I think that that offers some really cool, fun gameplay moments that I remember where it's just hectic chaos can ensue. And I love the boxes being there for added cover for when you need them. And also the occasional explosion, uh, explosive barrel, etc. It just, I don't know, I, I think this map plays really well. I love the weapons on it. I love, I mean, this is one of the maps that really does justice for the beam rifle, in my opinion. It really makes you like that sniper rifle more than the UNSC, or at least different. For It's different in that regard. And I just thought it was really cool. And then I also really enjoy the giant lift. I love, once again, cool moments that you can have just on there. If you're not going to be play playing competitively, if you just want to screw around. I mean, I'm sure everybody tried just sword dueling while every both of you are just going up into the giant lift. I think that adds for a really cool, fun aspect to the game. And I, I don't know, it just plays really well. I don't have anything to complain about it. I thought it looked cool. It played well. So I'm going to go with a 7 out of 10. Zombies. If I had to use one word to describe this map, it would be zombies. Because that was the game type you played on this map. I I never really cared for this in the, uh, in the matchmaking, but in a custom game, this was the map that was fun to play on. The balance was almost completely symmetrical. And it just it made for a very interesting thing. You could trick people into uh, the crates falling on them and you're just running around in a circle. But when it all came down to it, Zombies is the game that you played on this map, personally. Uh, if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a 7. I want this map back. I want to remake so bad. Because this was my absolute favorite four-on-four, two-flag CTF map. It was freaking perfect. Um, the lift in the center, I thought, was a great centerpiece to the map. It's it's right there in the center. That lift is so important. And the fact that you, you pretty much have a big U-shape you got to go around in. So even if you grab their flag, you're going to have to kill their other team like three or four more times before you can even make it back to your base. And it's intense. It's crazy. It's fun. Um, even Assault works well, too. Slayer's not even that bad. Um, I, I want to see it back. I would love to see a remake of this map. I would give it a 9 out of 10. It was fun. Um, it wasn't memorable to me. Uh, as much fun as I had on it, and I, I thought about that after playing it again, but until we did, honestly, I'd forgotten about it. Now... After I played it again, I did remember the things that I loved about it. It was fairly balanced. I mean, it, it, very balanced. Um, and it did seem to flow pretty well, and, and you could get around the map pretty quickly, and the way it changed when you played Slayer versus Capture the Flag was a great idea. Um, and it completely made sense to me to do that. Um, as well as the, the boxes falling. That's hilarious, having, having somebody chasing you or... You just sneak by, and you, you could jump up onto that, that little thing. I don't, I don't even know what to call it. The little thing that the box lands in on the conveyor belt. You could jump up on that and then up the up the second level of that. And if you timed that wrong, you'd get smashed by a box, and everybody would laugh. It, it was worth watching. I mean, especially in that crucial moment, or if you had the flag and you're trying to sneak around the long way or something like that, and it, it just always seemed to... to kill you when you least expected it and that that was great in itself i think that i would give it a six because it's just not memorable i i forgot about it all right to recap i gave it a seven austin 
I believe I also gave it a 7. Matt? I gave it a 9. And Ben? A 6. All right. So pretty favorable. I think we all enjoyed that one. I mean, even 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 if you say, you know, it wasn't that memorable, I think we all at least had fun on it enough that it wasn't it was it was above average, I'm sure. It wasn't a bad map. Yeah. All right, let's go to Containment. Containment is by far my second favorite map and out of Halo 2. Just the d- complete design of it while not really symmetrical like it follows, it still is somewhat symmetrical even though it's it's a winding curve the map uses heavy weapons and heavy vehicles perfectly because it's not just a wide open field so if you get a tank you're not just completely dominating the other team because you can get caught on a rock if you're not paying attention or you can get completely snuck up on by somebody that you did not even know was there there's so many different crevices and areas to run around in it's just it it's always makes for different gameplay and the way that you could open a gate to let people in or to keep people out there's nothing there's been nothing like that in any other map at least to my recollection i would have to rate this at least a nine because it is my favorite map my only problem with it is i was just sad that i was not able to play it more because the map rarely came up in big team battle well, as Austin was saying earlier that the Halo franchise needs to find new large map staples, I think Halo 2 is the game to choose from if you want to remake large maps. Because I thought Containment was almost like a fresh coagulation. It, it was huge. It was fun to play on. Um, being in a tank is fun. Being in a Banshee, a Warthog, you can use vehicles. And even though it's not preferable, being in infantry is not a death sentence on this map because there's so many crevices and trenches to run through. Um, the only thing that kind of throws me off is the map default weapon is an SMG, which doesn't work at all. Uh, but it, it's a really fun map, and I was really pleased with it when I when we first downloaded it. I remember seeing screenshots before it even came out, and I was like, oh, is that the map? Is that what we're going to get? And we got it. It was awesome. I love playing on it. I gave it a 9 out of 10. I remember being very excited before it came out i remember just looking at the pictures and hearing oh man it's it's huge it was supposed to be way bigger than any other map and to me it was a letdown i i just never really got into it it seemed like the only time that you could play it was big team battle and um that might have been its downfall for me a lot of the time i didn't have eight friends of mine you know or seven friends of mine to join me on a team so if I was playing that, it was me and maybe one friend of mine that would go join up with a bunch of people we don't know, and I just felt like it didn't matter what I did for the most part. And that's not even saying I'm not a good player, that I'm not the, the MVP all the time. I'm saying I did fine, but it just seemed like if I just turned around and threw grenades at the wall for a while, nobody would notice. And I, I don't really care for it. I would probably give it a four. I really enjoyed Containment. I don't remember it coming up a whole lot in Big Team Battle, which I believe you mentioned, Austin, but I wish it did more because it did have some really unique aspects to it. While the gate system, it it wasn't the first time it was used. I believe Zanzibar was the first one to have like a gate that you could open up and kind of change the way battle was done. But the whole way they did it in Containment was in itself its own original way. So I really did enjoy that. I loved how the the way to open the gate was outside the base, which really completely changed the way that went down. And I also, I I agree with you 100% that the way it was designed was like a blood gulch or a coagulation, but it went to a a slight S kind of shape, like a curve. And also the whole, the, the hills and the caves and everything throughout the center and the trenches really added a whole lot of cover for people that were walking, which is so important in a big team battle map. I mean, it, it's, it's, if you can only use vehicles and they're so dominant, then it really makes it hard for people on foot to get around without just easily dying. Same with sniper rifles. I mean, this is still a good map to snipe on, but it's not impossible for people to walk across, which is a really important thing. So, yeah, I can't agree more. Plus, the fun we had on top of the map doing ghost dueling was tons of fun itself. I mean, obviously, that's not, like I said before... That's not something that, you know, 
makes or breaks a map by any means. It's just fun to mention that that was a lot of fun to do that on top of containment. But yeah, the map itself, great map. I would love to see it back sometime. And I couldn't agree more with Matt when he said, if you're going to pick maps, like a big team battle maps staples, find, pick, pick them from Halo 2 because you'll be hard pressed to find one that's actually bad. But we'll keep going and see if maybe our opinion changes while we reminisce about some of these. Personally, I will rate containment uh, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. All right, let's recap Austin. I gave it a 9 Matt, I gave it a 9 as well. Bring it back 343 three, bring it back <laughs> Ben a 4 and I gave it an 8. All right, cool Next up is desolation. Oh Boy desolation um, I will say right off the bat, it is upgraded over the Halo 1 version derelict. Um, the lifts were preferable to the teleporters because they weren't so easy to defend. Um, it, you could, you still could. Um, it just took a little more, bit more skill to defend them instead of just looking left and right and taking care of the teleporters. And it, it plays surprisingly good for Slayer, although I had very limited Slayer interaction on it. Um, King of the Hill, which we played, was not that bad. Um, so, I would say it's probably a 5 out of 10 for me. Um, I It was certainly an upgrade over the Halo 1 version, but compared to other Halo 2 maps, it was just kind of there. I completely agree with uh, it was a, a step up from the last time they, they tried to make this map, but um, it still seems like it needs some work. It, it wasn't right. I get that they're trying to make a completely symmetrical map and that kind of thing or something like that, but, and I, and I, it was kind of balanced, I guess, but those lifts were awkward and, uh, I, I wasn't very good at using them, I guess. There's probably some kind of technique that's just my fault that I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't do it, but they seemed awkward. Um, the whole level just seemed... Uh, just kind of mashed together, and I, I don't care for it at all. I'd give it a, a two. All right. Um, I, I agree that with you guys that it is a step up from Derelict from Halo 1, definitely. I think the teleporters just did not do it for me in Halo 1, the two teleporters, whereas this time there's multiple ways up. You have a ra ramps that t can take you up on the sides, outskirts, with a whole lot of cover, so it's a lot easier going from the bottom half to the top half. And also the little kind of mini lifts things that shoot you up on, each, on both sides definitely help as well. I also think visually it's a step up. I mean, just, just taking the graphics capabilities out, I just thought there was a lot better color usage in this one. It looked a lot better, more enjoyable to play in. Um, it still wasn't that much fun. Like when I think great game types and games that I've played on Halo 2, it, I mean, it came out, it was one of the last maps to come out for Halo 2 with, ter uh, not Terminal, but Tombstone. So you didn't have a whole lot of time to play this map before Halo 3 came out. But it it just didn't... I don't have a whole lot of great memories there because it just didn't... I just remember playing Slayer on it and the occasional capture the flag and it just wasn't fun. I mean, I don't know. It just... It was average. So I'm going to go with a 5 out of 10. It was, it was average to me. I mean, it's nothing that I think is great. Nothing that I hate. It's just... It's average. 5. I think it's just boring. I mean, aesthetically, gameplay, everything about this map is boring. It looks like, I mean, no, nothing against Bungie, but it looks like it was designed by somebody in their first year of just programming. It it didn't really play well. The lifts were boring. The teleporter, you could have some fun guarding it and some tag through it. But other than that, the entire map was just a jumble of getting shot randomly or an occasional grenade throw and then hiding, waiting for your shields to run up and then repeating it to somebody else. The map has no memorable qualities about it. You forget about it the instant you play it. You never remember it and you never say, hey, let's go play this map. To me, I give it a two. All right, so to recap it, Matt? I give it a five. Ben? Two. I give it a five as well. And I gave it a two. Okay. And next up we got Elongation. As far as a remake goes, I was very happy with this. I think that this map was a lot of fun. Um, I like the conveyor belts. I like the boxes. My, my biggest problem I had with it 
was that the crates didn't start out all the way across the conveyor belts. So at the beginning of every uh, every game, there's just these big open conveyor belts, and occasionally that's actually good um, for capture the flag or things like that, where you could easily hop on that conveyor belt and go running across to the other team's base, but I mean, there's zero cover at all the whole time you're trying to do that. And then eventually those boxes show up, and uh, then you can do some jumps up to to those upper levels and get to cover or use them as cover but uh if they had just started out on uh, as soon as the game starts with the those crates i think that might have helped change my mind a little bit um for just something that annoyed me um i don't think i want to see it again i'm not mad they brought it back though it's not one that i went why did they do that i'm i think they did a really good job with it and it was I wouldn't say unique because Colossus had conveyor belts too, but maybe unique in the way it used them, that they were actually very helpful. Um, I would put it at a five. All right. To me, elongation was a step above longest in that regard, and I did really enjoy elongation personally. It, I the the changes they made with the jumping from. You, okay, you start out in one base, and then you can go up to the top, and you can jump to that middle platform, which you can cross over in this one, and then jump to there. I mean, you can literally spend the whole time on top if you wanted to ju from just jumping, and I think that works so much better for this one that they didn't have in longest. It didn't flow as well. I think the conveyor belts definitely help it flow a lot better. I love the concept behind it. You can use those boxes for cover down these long hallways, and I think that's essential because there is no other cover beyond that. I mean, there's a little dip in the wall, but besides that, you'd be pretty much screwed. You'd have one long line of sight, you know, for during the game, and you could easily get picked off with some, you know, BR fire, whatever. So I think, and, and I love how you can use those boxes to jump up to the top. I think that's a really interesting, I mean, if you have something that's moving across the level, two different directions on each side, that's really going to, you know, offer some unique gameplay that I think works really well for this. And yeah, I, I, I think when you talk in terms of game types that this was made for, I think Capture the Flag is awesome for this. 2v2, Capture the Flag, 4v4, Capture the Flag, tons of fun. Assault, eh, not, not so much Assault, it's a little small for Assault. I, 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 don't, I don't care for it as much, but Capture the Flag is just awesome. If you want competitive, high level Capture the Flag play, this is the kind of map that you wanna go with. Or even Slayer. I think Slayer works well as well. So those two game types work really well for this map. And I, I, I really don't have a whole lot of complaints about this map. I can't think of anything that it did, changes made, or just what it offered that I disliked. I, I give it, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I would I would like to see this map back, but it, it also isn't one that I really, if it's never back, then it's not a big deal either. It's a unique map. In fact, I've never seen anything like it before. Uh, Capture the Flag was definitely its strongest point. The moving boxes, very unique. But I personally, I just think it's something left in the past. It's just a, a little joke map that, hey, uh, let's go play on it. It's moving cover is really nice, but it just... It has no memorable quality to it, in my opinion. It, it was a unique try, but I think it's something that we should leave in the past. That's why I'm going to have to give it a 5. Elongation was great for Capture the Flag, and that's where it really stood out. Um, besides that, everything was just kind of okay. Assault was okay. Oddball was okay. Slayer, I thought, was just okay. Um, so if you're not playing CTF on it, um, this is probably not the map you want to be on. What I do like that it changed from Longest from Halo 1 is that Longest was really dark. It was almost hard to see sometimes. But Elongation, um, it's bright. You can see you can see far beyond you. And I had a love-hate relationship with those boxes. At the beginning, it sucked that they weren't there because, of course, you couldn't make some jumps. But then you had cover, but then so did your opponent. And sometimes I found myself cursing those boxes and then loving the boxes. They were cool. It was nice that they were there. I would give this a 7 out of 10. Um, its uniqueness doesn't make me love it, but I like it. All right, so let's recap it. Ben? A 5. 
I gave it a seven. I also gave it a five. And, and I gave it a seven. Cool. All right. Then next up we got Foundation, and I'll start this one. I really love the concept of Foundation. It's such a simple map, but it's one of those maps that is unique in the fact that it's built for four teams. I mean, you don't get a whole lot of those maps. I mean, I think there's only one other one in this game that we're going to get to that works really well for four teams. And this, it just, I mean, obviously right off the bat, you got to say zombies. It was a lot of fun for custom game zombies, but not just custom games. This one played really well, just Slayer, Capture the Flag, Assault, anything, you name it. Even if it's just two teams, Capture the Flag or Assault, I think it plays really well. Those two extra rooms are just simply extra. I mean, you don't need to have four teams on here, but I just think it plays exceptionally well for four teams. Or even just four single people doing neutral flag. Like in this video, it was just three of us doing neutral flag, and this was tons of fun. I loved doing that. It was some of the, you know, I, I just think it's so unique in that regard and i love the layout of it the having four separate rooms with the middle having a sword and then rockets on the side in the sh our rocket and shotgun on the side it it's very limited in its power weapons in options wise but it it just i i don't know it's hard to explain it just plays really well it's such a simple layout but it plays really well and i don't really have much to say other than that but i i just i think it's a great map and i would love to see this back so i'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven out of ten I'm going to have to agree. For its simple design, there's just something about Foundation that just sticks out. Whether it's four teams just in a battle royale or you and a small group of friends or just no matter what you have, it's it's just interesting. It's fun to play, and you're, you're always going to have a good time on it, at least in my opinion. I'm going to have to rate it uh, an 8 out of 10. Foundation was one of those maps that if you ask people their favorite Halo maps, Foundation probably wouldn't come up. But Austin hit it right on the head where you probably can't remember a bad experience on that map. I mean, it works for 2v2, 1 vs 1, 4 vs 4, and even multi-team. Slayer, Assault, CTF, and even Territories all worked pretty well, and Zombies was awesome on this map. It, it's not something great, you know, it's not one of those staple Halo maps, but it works for just about anything. And I gave it a 7 out of 10. This map, as far as symmetrical maps goes, to me, it's the top of the list. It, it's better than most of those small ones. They had trouble um, being able to use teams and things like that, where this map, even though it was symmetrical, um, well, for the most part, uh, was, was good for that. You could start anywhere and not feel... Um, what's the word? Not feel like you're at a disadvantage. Um, it played for everything, even SWAT uh, was actually fun for me on that map, and I, I don't think anybody should usually like SWAT, but for whatever reason, I had fun with that. Um, I think it gets ignored, like he said, pretty, pretty quickly. It's not a favorite by anybody, but if you're going to have a symmetrical map, it's not bad at all. I think some kind of spiritual successor for this map would be great. I would be pretty happy with that. I would say an 8. Alright, so to recap it, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I gave an 8 out of 10. I gave it a 7. An 8. Alright, so, I mean, that, yeah. Foundation, awesome map. Let's move on to maybe a not-so-awesome map. Gemini. Austin, why don't you start it off? Be a, <laughs> you get the honors to start off Gemini. Oh Yay, my Austin. god. This map. There is no redeeming quality about this map. The only thing I can think of when thinking about this map is the big stupid statue of the of the Covenant leader. It's just there's nothing good about this map. There's no fun times that anybody had, at least in my recollection. It, it's just it's a garbage dump. I don't know why they made this map. Nobody wanted to play it. It never came up, and when it ever did, nobody voted for it. That's I, I have to give it a one, otherwise I'm gonna just punch a hole in the wall. Talking about this map. Uh, careful there, that's not your wall. You're gonna be punching a hole into. Uh, Gemini though, it, it's a really small map, and it's honestly smaller than it looks. 
and the top teleporters were somewhat cool, but really the only memorable thing about it was the profit in the middle, the profit of terrible gameplay, because it was just a Slayer map, and even at that, it wasn't that great. And I don't know if anyone remembers, but does anyone remember that weird lighting issue it had? Where there was a certain section of the map where it, when you were walking forward, it would get brighter from, for some reason. It was a problem some Xboxes had with it, which was weird. And it just drags down an already bland and boring and crappy map. I gave it a 3 out of 10. I know nobody wants to see this one again, but it did have something that I thought was a little unique and was pretty fun. It was almost like a, a distance motion sensor. The, the way those doors would open up after beeping when somebody got near them. That made this so much fun, because you could be uh, defending one area, maybe it's capture, or, uh, King of the Hill or something like that, and you're trying to just figure out where they're going to come running in on you from, and then you hear that sound, and you look at the nearest door, and if it's not blinking and about to open, then you know you need to do a 180 right away, and just start hurling grenades at it. It's, I thought that was a lot of fun. I think it, it left you, I don't know, a, a weird line of defense when it seems like you have no cover or anything like that because you could get the drop on somebody. You knew when that door was going to open. You knew if a sword guy was on the other side, I mean, that you had a second. If, even if you knew he was over there, that you could just try to get him to, to run at that door, and as soon as it started beeping, you start throwing grenades where they're going to land in front of that door. Um, it, was, it was cool. It was also kind of a downfall because you couldn't just run through any door because you know there's a pile of grenades every time. But I thought it was unique at least. Uh, it, it at least puts it a little bit higher than a one for me. I'd, I'd put it at uh, at maybe a three. So still not a good map by any means, but those doors I wouldn't mind seeing again. Yeah, I agree. With the doors that Austin said there's no redeeming quality, I would say the doors and the way the teleporters worked, I didn't mind that. I also thought that was at least helpful to be able to get from one side of the map to the other. That was at least nice. It was kind of cool going from the very back of the inside all the way to the all opposite side on the outside. Um, I also liked the kind of teleporters that took you up into the air, which that didn't, I didn't think that worked well for gameplay at all, but it was kind of a unique thing to have two battling, basically, platforms up in the air that didn't go anywhere else. There were just two platforms that you could basically snipe or shoot down from, which is kind of cool. And I like the tree. I like the... Uh, how the or the sword was in the tree. I like the statue of the leader. Uh, like I said, scenery wise, it worked well. I thought it had some unique things that were pretty cool. But as far as playing this map, no, it's not very fun. Like like you said, the the doors offered some unique gameplay, and I like the concept of the get close enough and they start to open after they beep. That definitely offers a unique gameplay experience, which I like. That that was that was a cool part about the map. Beyond that, not a, not a whole lot else. So. Overall, I would give it a 4 out of 10. Just, I mean, it, it wasn't fun. I don't want it back. It's below average to me. It's not even, it's it's not just, it doesn't just get by for being average or not good or not bad. It's just, it, it is bad. It's just, I, I think it gets worse than this. But as in terms of blandness, yeah, this was not fun for really any game types. All right, let's recap it. I gave it a 1. I gave it a 3 three also and i gave it a four next up we got headlong oh man headlong now this is another map i want to see a remake of and i know a lot of people listening are saying but matt there's already a remake i want a remake that actually comes up in matchmaking because this map is too good to just let it sit on the sideline it it worked fantastic for pretty much every big team game type and it had such unique ways to get to the base there was four at least ways to get to the base uh through the building through the other side which i can't really explain but on the other side of the broken highway uh through the bottom and up on the beams it, there was just so many ways to attack the other base and that's why assault was my favorite game type on it but slayer ctf and even territories worked pretty well on this map uh, it was very unique had many ways to get where you want to go i gave it a 10 out of 10 i love this map once again, uh, it is fun, and that's what we're all here for. I think this map, uh, although it doesn't have anything terribly unique, really, I mean, it has some floating some floating bridge things that are or suspended bridge things that are kind of unique, and yeah, it's that, that city thing. Um, but other than that, not terribly unique. Um, 
but it did have uh, some some different um, gameplay that could occur all in the same map. You could have a sniper duel going on while you have somebody hiding with a shotgun next to somebody else who's got one. And it, it just seemed like these things happen more often than, than it should have. It seemed like if you had a certain weapon, you knew the route to take with it so that you could actually use it. So that you weren't just pounced uh, by somebody with a BR if you had a sniper rifle right away. You knew to cover the the uh, the open areas. And if you had a shotgun, you could wait in kind of a small area. And I think it played very well. Um, I don't know if I want to see it again, necessarily. But for the times I did spend on it, the hours I spent on it, probably the days, honestly. I probably played that for days um, in total time. It was a good time. I would put it at a 7. Headlong definitely was awesome for Assault and Capture the Flag. Like you said, Matt, it, it played objectives pretty well. I mean, what, obviously, one-sided objectives. You weren't going to be playing multi-bomb assault or multi-flag for the most part. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it was capable, but this map just shined. I, th I think, I mean, I, I might be going out of limb. This is probably one of the best maps in all of Halo for one-sided big team battle, you know, assault, especially assault or capture the flag. I think it plays it so well that it's just, like you said, I, I couldn't agree more that it should not be sitting out on the sidelines. Like you said, it, it, it's, it's in reach, yes. It was put in the Halo 1 or Halo CE anniversary map pack, which came out towards Reach's end and... It's not in rotation very much anymore, especially after they lowered the matchmaking options and playlists specific to DLC maps. Now it's just like snipers is all you get, which is a shame because this map, it, it's amazing. It's an awesome map. It, Man, I if, if we don't get to play this map again after Halo 2, then I'm going to be very disappointed because it's just so well. This is not something that... I want some, like a concept of it, like a similar concept or a spiritual successor. I want a remake of this with maybe a couple changes that, you know, may be necessary for certain areas, but I don't have anything to complain about this map. You guys covered all the great parts, so I'm just going to wrap this up. I give it a 10 out of 10. It's just great map. I love this map. Works so well. Well, there's not really much for me to say that hasn't already been said. I mean, obviously the game was great in matchmaking and custom games and even messing around. It was the map that everybody got out of and wanted to explore around. Every map, you have the matches where they're bad, but this is the map I feel that you had the most fun in. At least I did. I, I can't speak for anybody else, but it's, just, it's memorable for me. It is the Halo map. I gotta ha go ahead and give it a 10 out of 10. All right, so let's recap it, Matt. Ten. Ben? Seven. I give it a ten. And I also gave it a ten. Okay, next up we got Ivory Tower. Ivory Tower was great. I love the elevator at the back. I love the ramps coming up the sides. It seemed like a lot of the gameplay ended up on the top. But if you ended up going around the bottom or the sides or that shotgun glass tunnel thing, which was kind of cool, um, it was still fun. You didn't seem like you were bogged down all the time or I don't know. Um, even though it had rockets on such a small map, it seemed like the way they did it, they didn't last long enough to really dominate a whole game. And uh, that that's kind of important to me. I personally don't use the rockets very often and when they show up, it kind of ruins my day. But um, I had a lot of fun. I was really happy when they brought it back um, for... That's Reach that has that again, right? Ivory Tower? Yeah, I believe it's Reach. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Uh, pretty unique with the, with the elevator that moves up to those three... Or to the two levels above it. Um, and the way that you could really camp them if that's your style. Or if you step back, you could see that if somebody's watching for you. Um, I had a lot of fun. I'd, I'd put it at an 8. Above average for sure. Ivory Tower is a very versatile map. In the sense that this is one of the few maps that's great for Slayer. I mean, I love playing Slayer on Ivory Tower. 
be it 4v4 or free-for-all uh, Rumble Pit, this just was a fun map to play on. But not what, only was it great at Slayer, like this is something that did Slayer great, but it was also fun for Capture the Flag. One Flag CTF, it was really well done. And Assault. The unique thing about Assault on this map is that they had two spots that you could plant the bomb. They had, uh, it was, it, they were both close to each other, but it still offered a unique experience in that you had to guard both those spots, which I can't think of any other map offhand in Halo 2 where you had that, where it's two spots where you can arm that bomb. So I think that, I mean, man, I, I just think back to all the times on Ivory Tower playing th those, those, uh, game types objectively, one flag or one, one bomb assault or even Slayer and, I just so much fun was had and I also love that the I love the the way the weapons are set up on the map I love the sight lines that you get on the map for the sniper etc I also love some of the jumps that you can make on the map I mean that's not something you can bring up for every map but this is one of those that had a lot of cool unique jumps that you can make that really worked well in gameplay like uh, jumping from where the two lifts are jumping from there over towards the middle you could make that jump. It was a little bit difficult, but it was still fun to make. Or just jumping through the windows that they had in a couple spots. So yeah, it was definitely really cool. I love the little lift elevator thing. That's something that's pretty unique about it as well. I, yeah, I, there's nothing else to say. I just played all those game types. I mean, those are the essential game types to Halo is CTF and Slayer. And if you can play those two really well, then that's, that's an amazing map. So I'm going to go ahead and give Ivory Tower an 8 out of 10. Ivory Tower was visually just stunning. The gameplay was also really good. It was a fun level to play zombies on. Would I like to see a remake of it? Sure. Would I feel that it, if it was gone? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but I honestly, I wouldn't shed a tear for it. The one thing about it I did enjoy, though, was whenever people got to the top of the elevator... Everybody wanted to go up there because it was a good camping spot, but the they would get dethroned so quickly. It was just it was so much fun just to, for the whole opposing team to just charge up there and kick them out of that spot, and then they would take over it and they would just repeat. It, sometimes maybe that would be a little annoying, but I found it to be entertaining most of the time. I'd have to give it a seven out of seven, or a seven out of ten. <laughs> seven out of seven. Nice. I gave it a map. full seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ivory Tower, I know a lot of people say the staple of that map was the lift, and it was, it was what you remember, but to me, and this might just be personal experience, that was like a death elevator. I don't think I ever really had a good experience going up the lift unless I knew my team was at the top, because I just seemed to die all the time. And Well, that may be a personal thing. Um, another personal thing is I think I might be crazy thinking that the best game type on this map was one bomb. I thought Assault was great on this map, and whenever the bomb was going to the lower area where it was close to being on top of the, the lower arming area, it just became like a pit of danger down there. I, I probably logged in miles just inching it to the spot to arm it, and it was just crazy, it was intense, it was really fun for those game types, uh, CTF and Assault played great on Free For All. The only thing I realized that I may not like about it is that I think I played it too much. I think I'm burnt out. I don't think there's ever been a time where I said, oh, sweet, Ivory Tower. So for my personal rating, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Okay. Let's recap it. Um, ben? An 8. I gave it an 8 as well. I gave it a 7. And Matt? And I also gave it a 7. All right. So we're all pretty much in agreement on that map. I mean, we're just one point off. It was an awesome map. And definitely great for ctf and assault i love that two assault spots the forced teamwork it made was great the yeah way you had to yell at your teammates and say which way the bomb was going i forgot about that entirely That's yeah it's definitely wonderful. awesome yeah all right here's a so so map but let's 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 talk about it anyways let's talk about lockout um lockout to me is probably no, not probably. Check that. It is the quintessential small asymmetrical map for competitive Slayer. 
but it didn't just do competitive Slayer well. It also had, if you were looking for a bit more of a challenge and some fun, one flag CTF. Getting up to that top of the base on the BR side, grabbing the flag and trying to get that thing down to the elbow, that was just insane. It offered so many insane moments of leaps of faith trying to throw it down to the elbow, which way to take extreme teamwork needed because you would just, I mean, that was just a pain in the ass to get it down to the elbow. You wouldn't think going from a high ground to a lower ground would be that hard of a thing to do with the flag, but man, that, that was tough. But beyond that, if you want to talk Slayer, this is the Slayer map. This does Slayer probably the best map that I can think of in Halo 2. And it, it wasn't just, like, it played well 4v4, but this is a map that supports 2v2 or even 1 versus 1 really, really well. I also love the weapon placements. I love that you can use the BR to shoot the bear or the explosive barrels and knock down the sniper. I love the jumps. I love jumping from the top uh, ramps and uh, walkways all the way down through windows, way down on levels before or below it. It's just I think the this is hard. This is going to be a hard map to top, in my opinion, and this is going to be a hard map to replicate because it's just such a the layout just works from the lift that takes you up into that area. I, I mean, oh man, I I'm struggling to just define just how awesome it was. I mean, this is something you got to play. And and one other thing I want to mention that was kind of cool and unique is the window on the top in the middle platform that connected everything. The window in the top in the middle platform, you could see through that, but you couldn't break it. So you could see down through there, and you could see if somebody was camping down there with the sword or the shotgun. And same with if you're in there, you can see upwards if people are walking around up there. And I just thought that was really unique. So yeah, great jumps, great slayer, great visuals, a lot of fun. I just, I, yeah, I'm going to give it, it's got to be a 10 out of 10 for me. I just... In terms of small maps, this is the small map. This is great. I'm going to go ahead and have to agree that CTF was the strongest part of this map. And it was the best little big map in Halo. I also really enjoyed the, uh, the snow effects. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was the only map that actually snowed while you were playing. I think so. I mean, I don't think... I can't think of containment, but even though that was a DLC, so it, it, if it wasn't, if it didn't, or I mean, if another map did afterwards, it was the first one for sure. But yeah, little snowflakes would come down. It was subtle, but it was noticeable. Yeah, well, I love stuff like that. I think it makes the map so much better than just a regular map that's either during the sunshine or at night. That being said, though, Lockout to me just, it was okay. I mean, we had a lot of great times on it, but I think I, I played it so much, and every time you beat a team in matchmaking, they always wanted to fight you on lockout. That was almost a guarantee. I would like to see a remake, but I just... I don't know, personally, I'm just I'm burned out on it. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and give it a 8 out of 10. Wow, 8 out of 10. Um, Stefan, I don't know if I have any more adjectives left because did you use them all Yeah. when you were rating the map? Uh, so I don't know if I could say anything that you didn't already say. Um, it obviously worked for Slayer. That was the best thing for it. And it was really fun. Uh, I had a blast on it, although I died a lot because this apparently just was not my map. Um, but CTF, King of the Hill, Assault, Territories all worked well, and I don't even think it was designed to do that, which is amazing. So the fact that it could do what it was designed to do and do all the things that it wasn't designed to do very well was awesome. And the fact that it had a good ambiance and it snowed during the map, uh, during the gameplay on the map, it, it was great. And then I would give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, I've been trying to think of anything to just try and like combat what you guys are saying at all. And Slayer is my favorite uh, game type generally. I mean, it's probably the most fun I have. Um Overall, it's not the most exciting moments, but in general, that's what I like to do. I like to play a little more competitively. And this whole time you guys have been talking, I, I can't really come up with anything to say. It's my favorite map, always has been. I think it's what they're striving for when they recreate uh, things like it, like in Ford World, how they tried to do 
something similar like that. But as soon as the game came out, I think there were 12 copies of Lockout right away. That was the first thing people made because people wanted a competitive small map. Um, that's probably the only thing I could say. It, it is small. You couldn't do 16 players on it. That's the only thing you couldn't do on that map. Everything else seemed to work out somehow, even if it wasn't designed for it. And it even made up some other game types, or, or at least were available for other ones, like uh, the Tower of Power game. I remember playing it on that one and still having plenty of fun. Um, for custom games that actually took off, that it seemed to do it. Um, and it had to be on that map or Ascension for a reason. Or, or Was there another one it worked on? Uh, I mean, being able to do that on a map designed from uh, what I can only assume would be a competitive Slayer, that's... That's pretty good. It's uh, as good as it gets. It's a 10 out of 10. All right, so let's recap it. I gave it a 10 out of 10. I gave it an 8. I gave it a 9. A 10. Cool. Next up is Midship. Midship, to me, it, it's the signature Covenant uh, map, but it's just it's boring. It's symmetrical, yeah, but all, all the Halo maps are. The Sword Bridge is really the only redeemable quality to it, which is a very interesting thing and made for a lot of fun gameplay, but it's just, it's another map where it's in a big circle, everything is the same on both sides, and it's another purple Covenant ship. We have a lot of those. I want to see something new. I'll give it a 6 out of 10 just because we did have some fun on it but do I want to see it remade or brought back or anything? No. I'm done. Well, Midship was my favorite tiny map. And I don't say small map, I mean tiny because I think it worked perfect for 2 vs 2. That's what it was made for. 4 vs 4 of course works well on it but 2v2 is where it really shines and I think it works well for pretty much any game type. Slayer, Capture the Flag, Assault, King of the Hill, um, either Crazy King or just having it right down in the middle. Uh, Territories is probably the only game type I can think of that probably doesn't work that great on it. And the sword location is great because you have to earn your power weapon because it's out in the open. You can be shot by everybody else going to get the sword. You're obvious, you're in the way, you're right there. Uh, I had so much fun on this map. I think it's great. Uh, it's got a lot of purple going on but I, I like how you can at least look out the window and see space so there's at least a palette cleanser there I give it a 10 out of 10 I love midship um, I differ a little bit I, I think you're right it is tiny it's very small um, uh, with it being symmetrical and pretty much perfectly symmetrical it it, uh, it didn't leave a lot to the imagination I mean you, you knew what you had as soon as you started very purple uh, it did have that you started with plasma grenades. Made uh, a big change in the gameplay. Because people got stuck a lot more often with that. You would just see blue balls flying across the screen all the time. As soon as somebody spawned, it seemed like you couldn't keep your grenades long enough. But there were plenty of them around, so it, it, it just left... I don't know. I I think I'd, I've gotten stuck on that map more than any other map ever. And I don't even regret it. I don't even feel bad about it or dirty. But... Um, as for seeing it again, probably not. Seeing more maps where you start with uh, plasma grenades as the default, sure, that's fun. Um, it did play fairly well. Uh, I wouldn't be really mad if it was um, a flag game or anything like that. You knew you were in for kind of a, a tough battle with the other team. Um, it was a good time. I'd probably only give it a 5 though because I, I don't see why I would want to play it again. Don't worry, Matt. I'm here to do midship some justice. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I know you're probably wondering. Somebody else has got to like this map. Somebody's got to like it. Come on. <laughs> uh, no, you're not the only one. I, I enjoyed midship. I, I think it has great sight lines. I love how you can see from one base all the way to the other. Just complete the open window, almost, if you want to call it that, just open space. I love the uh, sword being up on the bouncy bridge is pretty cool. I liked, um, I, I, I thought it was a great symmetrical small map, like you said, for 2v2, 4v4, worked all those, it, it worked really well in that regard. I thought Capture the Flag was a ton of fun on this. I mean, 
Slayer and Capture the Flag were the high points of this map. Even even Assault. I mean, I now that I think about it, Assault had its moments too, arming that bomb in there. The whole fact that you can see, like I said, it's not that far from base to base and you can see across. I think that opens up a lot of possibilities in that regard because you can kind of guard the other person's base from your base if you have a BR or a sniper in that regard. But no, there's no sniper on the map, but just, just saying. And I really enjoyed the fact that you started with sticky grenades because for a lot of us, this is probably why we got good at stickies and, you know, sticking people. Just because you started with stickies on that, it opened up a lot more possibilities and potential and times for you to stick people. So it offered a lot of, you know, cross map sticks and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's a ton of fun. I, I think Oddball works really well. Capture the Flag, obviously, it's a high point in my opinion. Slayer works well. Shoddy, shoddy Snipers, while we're talking about Capture the Flag, was a ton of fun on this map. So yeah, overall, I mean, I'm going to go with the 7 out of 10. I really enjoyed this map. I thought I, I'd like to see it again. It's a lot of fun. So, yep, let's recap it. I gave it a 6. 10 out of 10. 5. And I gave it a 7. Next up, Relic. Relic, uh, really good for one flag and one bomb. And I love, again, it's kind of an asymmetrical map. Those maps are, are not neat to me because a lot of people love symmetry. And this map, you start kind of by the down pelican, you get a vehicle, you get some weapons, and then you got to fight your way into the base, which is fun. I also like the teleporter that you can activate in the back of the base, which if you can make it to the back of the base is a huge advantage because you can just take the flag, go through the teleporter, and right next to your base then. Uh, so that's a very strategic point. I think in Slayer and, uh, well, not in Slayer, I take that back. I mean, in objective base game types like CTF and Assault, uh, the side beach area and the beach behind the base is kind of wasted space. No one really goes there. There's no reason to go there. The furthest back you'll go is the teleporter. Um, that being said... One flag, one bomb, worked great. Everything else is all right. Relic, I gave a 7 out of 10. I'm going to go ahead and agree right off the bat. Uh, a 7 out of 10. It was designed for one purpose as far as I can tell, and that was objective-based games. Capture the flag, one or uh, asymmetrical map for one flag or assault. Um, saying that, though, it, it was fun. I did like... I liked trying to hop in a warthog and drive around the beach. It seemed like uh, usually the best way you had to go was was uh, around I don't know the on in the warthog and try to get to the all the way to the back, and uh, you'd have maybe somebody with you and you'd both jump out and have one try to if it was assault you'd try to go straight up the middle while the other one hits the teleporter and then goes up or. Uh, for flag, you'd have one go straight up to the flag and the other one hit the teleporter. That teleporter was really important. And I would see occasionally when a team would just ignore it and then try to protect it, uh, even if they were on offense after their teammate had gotten the flag closer to the beach because they didn't want the defense team being able to teleport back to their base and fight. And I thought it did add some uniqueness to the, to the gameplay. Um, I can't think of any other, aside from the really small symmetrical maps, any other level that has a teleporter that actually puts you at the back side of the offensive team's base, if that's what it's called. It was more just a rock with, a, was that a crashed pelican or something? Yeah. And uh, I, I would say, yeah, a, a seven, it did what it was trying to do and not really much more. Yeah, Relic was a lot of fun for the one flag and one bomb. I thought that was really awesome to have it just where you could see the flag right there just right in front of you almost taunting you but you need to make your way all the way back and around up to there just to throw it off and that's what everybody did because that was the that was that was awesome that's what you do you need to th get up to the top of there throw it off and then have a warthog waiting or something some sort of strategy or plan and assault as well and other than that I didn't really enjoy many other game types Slayer is not that fun on it um I did enjoy snipers. I think when you get like eight versus eight snipers, it can get pretty hectic and that can be fun. But in terms of your classic game types that I actually enjoy playing a lot, because I'm not huge into snipers, but it, they can be fun. Yes, one flag and one bomb. Definitely this this map is for those game types and it does it well. Um, not like Like you said, it does have some wasted space, it seems like. But overall, I don't think it's big enough to... For that wasted space to really matter because I don't 
I don't think it, it's not like the size of containment where you have a bunch of wasted space and, you know, that, that kind of makes you feel like you're just wandering aimlessly. It, the wasted space is just little outskirted areas, so it's not too bad. I did like the uh, Covenant Tower that's up in there, the floating tower. That's the only map to have that, I believe, and that was cool. That had the beam rifle in it, so that was always fun to go up and grab that. And it's just kind of cool to have that in general, to have the little lift throw you up into the base like that. Um, or the little floating tower, I should say. And just overall, yeah, I thought it played really well. I love the teleporter system where you could open up the teleporter through the little... Or turn it on, I mean, and then go from all the way from the base all the way to the outskirts. I thought that was really cool. But before you could do it, you had to, you know, switch the key or whatever you want to call it. Flip the switch. So overall, I'd give Relic... I'm going to go a 7 out of 10. It's it's something fun, and I would love to see it back again with some changes, but I, I would love to see it back nonetheless. I love Relic. It is one of my favorite Halo 2 maps, but there's not really anything I can say about it that hasn't already been said. Great capture of the flag, interesting things. But So I'm going to have to go with a popular vote of 7 out of 10. There's just really nothing more I can say. I would rate it higher because whenever we play Halo 2, it's the map I want to play, but I honestly, I forget about it the moment we play it, we stop playing it. I mean, so what else can you say about the map? All right, so let's recap ratings. Uh, Matt, what'd you give it? I gave it a 7. Cool. Uh, ben? Uh, 7. And I gave it a 7? I gave it a 7 as well. 7's across the board. Bungie's, Bungie's proud of us. Yep. <laughs> Bungie's favorite. All right. Next up, we got Sanctuary. Sanctuary was one of my favorite maps. Um, I I just loved it. I I don't really know why. I think having the two bases on on far sides with something even bigger in the middle drew your attention right there. Everybody knew where to go. You knew where the fight was happening from the start. <laughs> I mean, that countdown happens. If you're not facing it, you know you got to turn and run right at it. You don't know why or. You know, you might grab the sniper, but you're still pointing right at the center of the map. It kept you involved uh, pretty quickly. It played well for um, Slayer. Uh, actually, pretty competitive map, in my opinion, um, because, I don't know, it just seemed like you could you could see great distances from on the, on the little walkways, but even if you were out in the grass, I mean, you, you had cover. There were rocks and things like that. So a very competitive Slayer map for me, as well as the uh, Capture the Flag and other objective games. It seemed like pretty much every objective game I can think of, aside from, I don't know, I don't think I want to do territories on it, but other than that, you could pretty much do anything. Even uh, Neutral Flag was fun, uh, the way that tug-of-war would happen with the middle. Um, having that sword in the middle, too, that seemed like, a good place to have the sword um not perfect though it was a place people had to go to but because of it was circular in there uh it also left the sword guy unable to really camp one corner which is also why i love it um it, it just seemed like it was a very even map all the way around um sanctuary was a very even map uh as far as competitive play i didn't feel like either team had an advantage if a team thought they were really good, and I had a team that I thought was really good, and we came up against each other. It was clear who the victor was, who was really better in that moment. Um, I would rate it at a 8. Cool. I agree with a lot of things you said, especially about the sword guy not being able to camp in the middle because he didn't really have a corner to himself. I thought that was a really good observation on your part. I didn't even think about that, but it makes complete sense now. And, yeah, that's definitely for the better. Um definitely love this slayer i love it more for capture the flag i think i love it even more for neutral flag just because that's such i love the tug of war aspect for it where you're constantly trying to get you know it's, it's a constant battle it's not something that's easy and it also plays into strategies to get your teammates back to the center before you score it so it can really offer some very hectic gameplay but yeah it plays i'm sure it plays assault fine too not to the level of capture the flag and slayer but I, I could see the map. I can't recall playing Assault on it very often. If, if it was maybe like a neutral bomb, I could see that. I think I remember playing neutral bomb, and that was probably pretty fun. Because, yeah, it, just, it works really well for any sort of symmetrical play, be it Slayer or um, Objectives. So, yeah, I, lo I love that aspect of it. I love the two snipers on each side. 
I think that works really well of the walkways that lead into the center and how you could get in the center by jumping on the rock and then up to uh, the center. I thought that worked really well. Um, yeah, you pretty much covered everything else. I thought, and, and it's a good looking map to throw that out there as well. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. I, I I enjoy it. I'd love to see it again. And yeah, it's just it plays it plays great on multiple game types. I felt that it was just it was boring. It was visually boring. You could easily make it yourself with a some Legos at home. It just it has no redeemable qualities. Yes, it, it's good for a capture of the flag or an assault or a big or a, it's a regular match. But so is any other map. This it's just it's completely average to me. I could give or take on this map. That's why I'm gonna have to give it a five out of ten. I thought Sanctuary was pretty cool. I, I like the symmetry of it. I thought it worked well for Capture the Flag. Um, two two flag and one flag worked pretty well. I might be I might have a different memory, but I thought Neutral Flag was just okay on this map. It seemed a lot of times that if someone could just get to the center and throw it back, that that team had it, and the rounds seemed to end quickly on that. Sometimes, yeah, it was really competitive, but it seemed like the rounds ended quickly. I think the superior neutral version of the game was Neutral Bomb, because with Neutral Bomb, you had to go into the lines to end a score, and it was almost always competitive. Uh, that was my favorite objective type, game type on that map. Slayer, I think it works better for Free For All than Team Slayer, but it still works well for Team Slayer. I, I thought it was a nice looking map, but it's probably not my first choice, but I wouldn't turn it down, so I'd give it a 7 out of 10. All right, let's recap the scores. Ben? 8. Okay, and I gave it a 7. I gave it a 5. And I also gave it a 7. Cool. Next up, we got Terminal. Terminal was a very, very different kind of map. And not just because of the train. I just thought this this kind of map sticks out in Halo 2, in my opinion. Not in a bad way. I mean, it just sticks out. like It doesn't fit in with the rest in regards to its layout. It's the way it's structured, what it's the game types it's made for. It's just kind of different. I, I don't know. It's just it seems to play so different from anything else in the game. And it, it works though. It works for Capture the Flag. You know, big team battle, obviously. It works for Slayer, it works for Capture the Flag, it works for Assault. And obviously all of those being, you know, one bomb and one flag, etc. But it works and I like it. I, I would love to have this map back. I love the train going across, uh, or the monorail, or whatever you want to call it, going across, and how you could get killed by that, and you had to make the jump across the bridge with the wraith, etc. And I just remember so many funny times of getting that wraith stuck, and you knew you were screwed. But that's that's the whole fun of that part. Um, I like I I don't I don't actually I can't say that I like the fact that you could spawn up in that top area, which you couldn't get to other than spawning up there i thought that is I don't, I don't really care for those kind of areas that you can spawn in but can't get to afterwards I, I see why they do it because it's a safe spawn zone that you can't get up to so nobody can go up there and like spawn camp or not spawn camp but spawn kill you but also it i mean it could be abused in certain game types if it was like fiesta then you could start up there with a sniper and then you know easy day so but i, I don't know i just didn't I didn't think that was necessary, but it's not. It doesn't detract from the map and the enjoyment that I felt for it. I ultimately I find this to be a great map, to, tons of fun. I mean, like I said, for multiple game types. So yeah, I definitely would love to see this back. I would give it. I'm gonna go nine out of ten on Terminal. Nine out of ten, I think, is about where. It, I think before I thought ten out of ten, but the more I think back to it, I, I'm gonna go nine. I think I know what you mean about how it doesn't stick, or it sticks out. It doesn't really blend well with other Halo maps because it's kind of not really like a Halo map. It's more fit for, say, Modern Warfare. Um, that's not saying that it's a bad map. I love the map, and I love the fact that it has a, uh, a hazard, the train. It's one of the very few maps that has an outside source that will just randomly kill you, aside from falling in a pit or falling in water. I would love to see more of those in a map, and that's why I love Terminal. At the same time, though, the parking garage is just, it's kind of boring, 
boring fight fighting. I don't really know if the map is good for CTF or Assault. None of it really stuck out to me. It was basically just a deathmatch map. I do think, though, that I'd have to rate it an 8 out of 10. I love the train. I think Terminal is probably one of the best DLC maps that ever came out. I think Capture the Flag was where it really shined. Um, how you could start in that base with uh, the two Warthogs, and you could just go. Go out to the other base where they got a ghost and a wraith. I know they had the wraith for sure. I'm pretty sure they had the ghost. And try and get that flag. And the fact that the base you started in had a turret that you can at least provide cover fire when you're trying to get back to the base was really fun. Assault was all right as well. Slayer worked great. Uh, I love how it had almost as much outside level as it did inside. And there were many ways to get to where you want to go. The train, great hazard. I, I just like how you have to not only watch out for your opponents, but you have to watch out for the environment. I would love to see this map back, and I think this is now the third big map I said I want to see ba back in Halo 4. I gave it a 10 out of 10. This map to me was uh, very anticipated. As far as uh, DLC went for this game, I remember looking at, at the pictures and the way they talked about it and how funny the idea of a, of a train was to me and how often it could just randomly ruin your day um i remember really really just looking forward to it i remember as soon as that was available i remember getting it right away and just going straight to that map that was the first thing i, I played right away just to figure it out I was, a train it, it was ridiculous to me okay halo's never had a train before why not let's have one that just randomly kills you um it was a letdown though to me i I felt it didn't play as well as it looked. I think they got really excited about this hazard, but I don't think it really made the map much better. I think, actually, I, I take that, I flip it. It's the only thing that made that map good to me. Uh, most of the rest of the map was just kind of just mashed together. It seemed like it didn't have a its right place. It, it felt like It felt like they were trying to make this some city in some Halo world that, that would have made sense. But the truth is, to me, a Halo map shouldn't be what a normal city would look like with a real train or something like that. Um, I think I think I would only give it a 6. I want to see a train back, maybe. I wouldn't mind seeing some other station that made, I don't know, the game more fun. The, the spawning up in the, the safe zone was a annoying at times i remember i remember being very annoyed when the whole team just wouldn't come down and that just ruined some of it for me uh yeah that's my thoughts all right so to recap it i gave terminal a nine out of ten i gave it a seven i gave it a ten out of ten I don't remember what I gave it, but I'm going to go with six. I think it was six or seven. Yeah, it was six. Cool. <laughs> you instantly forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't deny it. Yeah, no, I forgot. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got Tombstone. I did not play Tombstone in Halo 2 or Halo 1, so I can't comment on it, and I wouldn't be fair to rate it. All right. So then, Matt, why don't you start us off? Oh, boy. Uh, I did play this in Halo 1 and Halo 2, and if anyone watched our previous Halo 1 map uh, retrospective, I spoilers. hated Hang em High. I hated it so much. Yeah, spoiler, spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, skip ahead if you don't want to hear what I think about the Halo 1 maps. Uh, I, I hated Hang em High. I just found it so mundane, and I acknowledge the fact that I might have been burned out by the fact that everyone loved it. I'm trying not to be all hipster Halo map raider here, but I gave it a 4 out of 10. I just don't have fun on this map. It works okay for Capture the Flag, Slayer's alright, everything else I just don't have fun with. And it basically was a copy and paste from the original map, except they added that little hole that you can go down in. And they switched the gray color scheme with a brown color scheme, which is not an upgrade, it's more of a lateral move. So yeah, 4 out of 10, Just it's just not my map. This map is, uh, it, it was one of my favorites for Halo 1, and it, it kind of just proves that, I, I guess, occasionally you don't know what you want, because seeing them bring it back actually didn't do it justice to me. It, I don't know, I, I thought it would be as much fun as it was in Halo 1, and 
I have no idea why, really. It's the same map pretty much, but I didn't enjoy it nearly as much. It might have been um, just the online experience changing it for me, but I didn't really enjoy it. Uh, obviously, the, the same thing as before, so there's not much I can say about it visually or anything like that, but as far as gameplay went, it just... It felt like I didn't really want to play Capture the Flag or any actual objective game. It just seemed uh, a little one-sided. And I think I would put it at a 3. I, I know now my the error of my ways. I don't want to see it again. I could tell you exactly why I did not care for this nearly as much as Hang em High. And the reason being is the battle rifle. And that's not to say that I hate the battle rifle. I think it's useful in certain ones. But this is such an open map. Like, this is just ridiculously open. And yes, in Halo 1, you did have the Halo 1 pistol, which some may argue is better than the battle rifle. But to me, it just battle rifle just made this map not that enjoyable for me. I did like Capture the Flag. I did like, you know, Basic Slayer. But it's not like I like these enough to want to play them on this map. If I wanted to play Capture the Flag Big Team Battle, I'd be choosing a different map that we've already covered, or maybe something to come up. I would not be choosing Tombstone. For some reason, Tombstone just isn't that enjoyable. I really liked Hang'em High, but yeah, I, Tombstone didn't capture the same magic. And like you said, sometimes you don't know what you want. I don't think it's the map that's the problem. I think, you know, over each game, the gameplay changes to a degree, or you add new weapons or, you know, specific traits to it that just don't work on certain maps. And... You know, usually they adjust the map accordingly to work for those new additions, and I don't think it was done here enough to make it, like, fun to play, I guess. I mean, it's not it's not the worst map, but it's not, you know, it definitely has been, there's, there's worse in Halo 1, there's worse in Halo 2, and there's worse in the future games, I'm sure. But as far as Tombstone goes, yeah, it's not anything to write home about, and it's a disappointment in terms of how much I enjoyed Hanging My, so... I'd give it, I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. It's it's above average still. It's still a decent map to play on. It's just nothing. I, I'd choose any other 6 out of 10 or 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, or 10 out of 10 map. Just because, I mean, maybe even a 5 out of 10. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I just, something about it just didn't seem to click. Was this the, the last DLC to come out before Halo? Yeah, and, and you know, it was... Tombstone and Desolation were was were in their own pack together, and it was the last DLC to come out before Halo 3. And so I think there was only like months to a year to play this before Halo 3 came out. Because I know we all had 360s, or at least 360 was out by the time these maps came out, because they were originally supposed to be 360 exclusive maps. Like you had to be on 360 to download them. And they're, and they're visually, they're an upgrade compared to the other Halo 2 maps. They are... They do have a better, richer visual quality to them. I remember hearing that before they even came out, just that they were a lot better. But, you know, that, that doesn't make a map. And like you said, in terms of the color scheme, going from gray to brown isn't an improvement at all. I mean, I don't, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer gray over brown, personally. I wonder if it was just a gimmick. If, uh, if they played them and realized that they weren't fun, and maybe that's why they decided, you know, I mean, because it's easy to remake a map you already had. Maybe they did remake it. That was the first thing they did. And then they turned around, played it, and went, you know, this isn't any fun at all. Let's uh, let's just make a DLC later. Let's have those people buy it for now. I do remember that on the Bungie.net forums, people were really clamoring for a Hang 'em High remake for years. Yeah, Hang 'em, yeah, Hang 'em High was one of the most favored maps from Halo One, and I don't, I don't know how, you know. I don't know how the majority feel about this map. Obviously, we only have our own opinions to go by, which some of us didn't care for it, one didn't play it, and two of us thought it was a disappointment in terms of Hang 'em High, just because we thought Hang 'em High was a good map. But yeah, I don't know. It just, I don't know. I, I, I'd be interested to find out how most people f uh, feel about this map in terms of did it do Hang 'em High justice in their opinion. To me, though, I like I said, I didn't, I didn't think it did. And I understand why they chose the color scheme they did. I'm not trying to seem like I'm ignorant in why they went to brown. It's Tombstone. It's a movie. It's a Wild West movie. They did the whole sunset and brown, Wild West type of theme. But I don't know. It just wasn't. It's still not great about it. I don't know. We covered everything to say about this map. So, yeah. we Did we did we do our recap of ratings? Matt, what would you give it? I gave it a four. Ben? 
A three. And I gave it a six. Because, like I said, I still thought it was decent, but yeah, I could definitely see why you guys did not rate it highly. It's not... Yeah, it's very disappointing. Um, let's move on to brighter pastures. Let's go to turf. All right, turf. Am I starting since... Yes. Austin, yeah. okay. I didn't know if that counted as a start last time. <laughs> You're good. Um, uh, turf, I, I really liked. I, I liked how it was an urban map, and it was even more urban than Terminal, which was a big change from a lot of maps, excluding probably Headlong. But you were right there in the city. It was like, you know, like guerrilla warfare. And it even had a vehicle, which is weird, because you wouldn't think a map like that would have a vehicle. But there was. There was a Warthog on there. and It was, it was fun to play as. And I thought a lot of game types worked well. And its Slayer, I thought, was probably the best. But Oddball worked. I liked Crazy King as well. Capture the flag. And let's not forget, Turf's greatest contribution to matchmaking was that it added the Brute Plasma Rifle as a default map weapon. I'm, I'm just kidding. That's not that special. But it, it did add something cool that no other map had. So I, I give it a 9 out of 10. I'd really love to see this map again. Turf was one of my favorite maps. Um, I I love this little map. Um, maybe I'm just partial to little maps um, with less vehicles and more competitive, uh, I don't know, situations coming up. But it also did have a few unique things. It had the... The swinging bay door for that little hangar that was randomly set up on the street on the one side. And it had the, the scarab in the corner. I mean, you couldn't use it or anything, but, you know, for scenery, it, it had things like that. It looked like it was where warfare had already occurred, where, I don't know, story-wise, if there was something like that. It kind of, it was interesting. It was actually fun. It also had uh, those those streets and alleyways in it that, that set you up for perfect little battles um it, it seemed to just flow it seemed like uh i never would would want to play anything other than turf if it came up i i was excited i was ready to play i knew i was in for a fight it, it was very fun uh i would probably call it my my favorite halo 2 dlc map uh i'd give it a 10 yeah, Turf was a great map. Man, so many great memories on Turf. Worked so well for um, Team Doubles. I think this is a great Team Doubles map. I think it plays, you know, I think it actually plays best at Team Doubles. I mean, it plays 4v4 pretty well too, even free for all. But yeah, Team Doubles, this was just an awesome map. It seems so balanced and so, like, there's no, there's no real spot that you get a hold of and you're completely dominant. It's not like that. It has so much to it that there's nowhere to camp and just completely rule the whole game. It it fits. I mean, the, the weapons spawn in a good area, and spawns in general are all great on this map. And like you said, I love the bay doors. For I love that there's a warthog on such a small map, first of all. I should probably mention that before I forget. The fact that you could have a warthog on such a small map and drive it through these little narrow alleyways is just funny to me because it's completely useless but <laughs> it's awesome that they included it because i mean you can get kills with it i mean obviously it's still a turret that's movable but it's just impractical in this scenario but it fits it fits the environment to have a warthog here i love the scenery i love the atmosphere it gives off yeah it's just it's tons of fun i i, I thought capture the flag was a lot of fun on this map uh, for 4v4 or team doubles, but yeah, Capture the Flag played really well, and Slayer played really well. So yeah, any 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 map that you can get Capture the Flag and Slayer to play really well, definitely a high point in the series for sure. So yeah, I'm going to give Turf in... Oh man, this might be the first one that I'm really torn between an 8 and a 9. Um, I'm going to go... I'm going to go 9, just because yeah, I would love to have this map back. I don't... I can't remember any bad experiences on turf, so I'd love to have it back. There isn't much that can be said about turf that hasn't already been said. It's a great map. It flows perfectly. You can play any game mode on it. It was great for custom games. It was great for matchmaking games. It was. It was a. It was a great balanced map too. You never really had one team that backed another team into a corner and just mercilessly beat on them and spawn killed them for the entire map. At least never that I saw. I'd have to give it a 9 out of 10. I, I love this map. I want to see it remade. 
It was silly. It was great. It had memorable landmarks. It was just a great design. All right, let's recap this. Matt? I gave it a 9 out of 10. I gave it a 10. I gave it a 9 out of 10. I also gave it a 9 out of 10. All right, so that must be a favorite. You guys must like this map, don't you? Yeah. This this yeah. is why we're sitting here for hours talking about maps. Okay, this was turf. Don't <laughs> this was turf. This whole thing was done just so we could review turf. Yeah, this whole thing was just a lead up to turf. <laughs> yeah. Next week's podcast about turf alone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the turf cast. We talk about what we'd like to see in turf. Four. <laughs> it's no longer Halo Four. It's Turf. Halo Four. Halo Turf Edition. <laughs> yeah. Turf <All> Warfare. Right. <laughs> turf Warfare. Nice. Um, yeah. Let's move on to Warlock. Warlock was a map I didn't care for. Uh, while playing it again recently, we found the neutral flag was possibly the most fun we had the entire time that we were replaying these maps. And that's probably just our unique scenario of three players. I mean, there's not a lot we could do for them, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, turned out it was very exciting. Uh, I, I didn't remember it that way. If we'd have done the review four days ago, I would have said, no, I, I don't want that map at all. But it really explains why symmetrical maps are needed, why you need to have those, uh, especially with four teams being a possibility, to have a, a level that was basically a square, to have four sides that are the same, or corners that could be bases, or things like that. It played very well, much better than I remembered, uh, possibly because I do play Slayer more often than not, and as a Slayer map, it's uh, it's a little bit too small to do anything too strategic, really. It, it, it kind of cut you short for what you could do as a team and things like that. Uh, and if you were a great team, it kind of just meant that you were going to dominate uh, from the top part and just really crush the other team and become really one-sided awkwardly fast. Um, I'm still not going to raise it too much, even though I did have fun with it uh, recently. I'll probably still just leave it at a 6. A necessary map, I think. Something similar has to be made for any kind of remake to come uh, or another Halo game or anything like that. Um but not great, but necessary. Six. Yeah, I agree that this is completely necessary. I mean, I don't get too much into high-level MLG-style gameplay, but when it comes to a map like this, I think this is a kind of map that everybody can enjoy. I mean, this is for the high-level people, but, and you know, maybe it's not the casual map where you go and have a great, fun, you know, screw around or anything crazy like that. Usually that's bigger maps for that kind of, more fun aspect but in terms of anybody that enjoys any sort of competition even it's the smallest level to the biggest level this is a great competitive map in that regard it's completely balanced obviously with the symmetrical layout and as i said for foundation this is one of the rare maps that is built for four teams and i, I love that aspect about it i mean you get four teams of two and you're gonna be having a great time here and I, I love that about it. It's just, I think, I think I like, I like that the, uh, invisibility up at the top in the middle. I love, um, just the weapon layout. I mean, you don't really have a whole lot of power weapons on here. And I think that, I think that's why it really works. I mean, I love, don't get me wrong. I love power weapons to use them They're They add a lot of fun, dynamic gameplay, but in, if you just want the bare necessities, you have a shotgun and, what am I forgetting? I mean, you got... Is there a sword on it? I don't even know. No, there's not a sword. There's just a shotgun and the invisibility. And I mean, there's obviously needlers and other crap like that and pistols and stuff like that, but n nothing else, like, super powerful. I mean, unless I'm, like I said, unless I'm forgetting something, which I don't think I am, it's just the bare essentials, and I, I love that about it. It's very... Like you said, we had a lot of fun playing Neutral Flag on it. I remember having a lot of fun playing just, you know, 4v4 Slayer is fun. 4v4 Flags is a lot of fun on here. Uh, Multi-Flag, playing 4 versus, uh, four, versus 4. That whole top part, I mean, it really, I, I mean, it's just, I love how it wraps around like that. And it has, each side has its ramp, then platform, and then jump to the base. And also, or you can just take it through the top middle or the bottom middle. If you want fast-paced, competitive gameplay, this is the map. 
So yes, it's very necessary to have maps like this. I don't want a ton of them, but having like one or two at least in the game, no more than four, is definitely necessary. So yeah, I, I, I will give it, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I really like this map. Well, I like the four team starting maps. Th this one just did not please me. I am clearly in the wrong company right now. It, it's just it's boring to me. It, it feels like it's one fourth of a map that was copy and pasted four times. It it doesn't have any redeemable qualities to me. It's just a small map. You could put a just a big room and just have people fight in it. And I think that would be more entertaining than this map. Honestly, I have to give it a 3 out of 10. I just I do not enjoy playing on this map. We don't like your kind around here. Because I I agree with uh, Stefan and Ben. I think Warlock was... It's a map that it's hard to mess up. It's four bases, four teleporters, and a middle structure. And it's a lot like Foundry. In the fact that it's great for competitive game types. And you're not going to do anything really wacky on this. It's not map like it's not a headlong where you're going to snipe someone off a beam and he's going to fall onto someone else and kill him or something like that it's a fast-paced competitive game type it's like having this in your map rotation is like adding fiber to your diet it keeps you regular it brings you back down to earth warlock is great um neutral flag was great uh, multi-team was great slayer is great this is a map that is just great uh, i gave it a seven out of ten it may not be amazing, but it's great. I like it. Cool. So let's recap it. Austin? I gave it a 3 out of 10. Matt? I gave it a 7. Ben? A 6. And I gave it a 7 as well. Cool. All right. Here for the main event. No, I'm just kidding. We still have one more to go after this one. It's Waterworks. 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 Oh my gosh, I, I would love to see this map again. I'll just start off by saying that I really enjoyed this map. It's, man, I'm going to start off by saying atmosphere, atmosphere, atmosphere. If you love unique environments to play these maps on, this is a unique environment. I love the cave setting to it. I love the hole in the ceiling with the light shining down. I just, it just works. I mean, obviously, I'm somebody that loves art in that regard so i love the look of this map i love the sounds of this map now gameplay wise capture the flag just shines supremely but even better than capture the flag is assault this plays neutral bomb assault so well neutral bomb or multi-bomb so well that it's just Oh my gosh, so many fun memories on this map. I think the vehicles are, I mean, this is one of the most fun I have with vehicles in a map. It's its a little bit closer proximity, but it, it has enough cover and everything that the people that are, much like in contain, uh, on containment, people aren't screwed if they're on foot. I think there's enough in the middle ground to offer somebody who wants to walk on foot or snipe or I, I guess that's that's what I'm getting at is that it has a lot of versatility in what you want and how you want to play. If you want to be Mr. Vehicle, you can stand a chance. If you want to be a guy on foot, you can stand a chance. If you want to go up and snipe and camp up on top, you have you stand a chance. Take the banshee up to the very top and on that little perch way up there and snipe from up there. It's fun. It's cool. But yeah, I, I think where it plays best, I, I wouldn't really care for this slayer wise, but in terms of the objective I definitely think it shines. Capture the flag and assault, definitely. So yeah, in terms of assault, love it. Love the base structure. And I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. This is my favorite big team battle map. Like Stefan said, the atmosphere is just amazing. It's unlike anything we've ever seen in a Halo game. I love the fact that you look up in the cave and you can see cracks in the ceiling of sunlight just shining down. I love the fact that you can shoot stalagmites or stalactites. Stalactites. And they fall down on the ground. Yeah, you may not actually be able to take anybody out with them, but just the fact that they're there is just amazing to me. I love... There are so few maps in the Halo series where you can cause hazards like this, and it's just it's amazing. Flag captures and assault are obviously the main standpoints. Big team battles, great. Deathmatch is great. Overall, this whole map, I can't find a flaw with it. I'm going to have to give it a 10 out of 10. 
Waterworks is the fourth map I've mentioned now that I would love to see a remake of in Halo 4. I haven't had more fun playing big team capture the flag on any other map. I think this was it, and Neutral Bomb was very good as well. Uh, Slayer worked okay. Uh, what I think would be amazing is, could you see this map in Forge World in Halo 4? Uh, I'm not saying this is part of my review, but if you could cut off one of those main bases and add a little bit more cover, that would easily be an asymmetrical CTF map. And that's why I would like to see a remake, because of how much fun I had in Halo 2. I think this map flowed very well. Uh, 8v8 was great. Even playing heavies where you had scorpions instead of raids was awesome. It wasn't necessarily overpowered. It was really hard to get the, the upper hand because it was just so evenly matched. I would give it a 10 out of 10. I want to see it back so bad. I completely agree. This this map is great. Everybody agrees with that. I'm not going to argue with that at all. If anything, I'm just going to say why I think it's great. Uh, I think the idea of having an underground cave thing with a banshee in it at, at two sides... That's awesome. Um, a lot of the levels have some kind of invisible wall or something like that. You can only go so high. This map didn't have anything hiding what you could and couldn't do. Um, except maybe that one little crack in the ceiling or whatever. Um, but it also even had things up there, like you said about the stalactites and how you could, you could shoot them down and they could fall and do like occasional damage to the most unlucky thing alive. Um, but I think I even crashed into one in a banshee and it killed me right away. I mean, things like that just happen when you have those things available. And I think it's great that they did that. I think, like you guys say, or like Matt said specifically, the forge possibilities. I think bringing this back now would be a wonderful idea. I think the only things I could even complain about would be that the bases themselves are a little bland. Um, maybe some kind of moving part or something would be kind of cool. Um, and it was really dark. Uh, just in general, sometimes people could get lost in the background of the walls and everything, and I get it's supposed to be an underground thing, but, I don't know, a little light wouldn't hurt, in my opinion. Uh, I'm still going to put it at a 10. Alright, cool. So let's uh, recap them. I believe I gave it... Did I give it a 9? I think so. I think I gave it a 9. If I didn't, <laughs> I'm giving it a 9, so <laughs> hopefully I gave it a 9, because that's what I think. But, Austin? I gave it a 10. I also gave it a 10. And a 10 for me. Well, aren't I just that guy this time? <laughs> mm. Look at the odd man out over here. But yeah, Waterworks definitely an awesome map. I don't think any of us are doubting that. I mean, what's the difference between a 9 and a 10? Not much. But yeah, I just... If I had to make one complaint to justify my 9 in front of everybody, <laughs> if I'm up on the pedestal, it's uh that the outskirts over where the bridge is is a little bit wasted in my opinion i think that part could be done better like that whole tunnel system over by that bridge and all that is just kind of like you talked about on relic where you don't really use that area a whole lot i don't ever really find myself using that a ton i see why it's there with the teleporters and all that but i guess i just i never really took that way as much as i just kind of go up the middle or just around the sides a little bit not really taking that but Anyways, I, I forgot to mention that. So any of you can tell me. <laughs> no, clearly you're yeah. just justifying your nine for yourself and <laughs> yeah. no one else is listening to you. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right, well, let's move on to the very last one and possibly the main event. We'll see how it goes. Zanzibar. Zanzibar is a perfect example of a storming the beach map. With a base in the middle... When a, with a base on one end and a beach on the other... And a windmill in the middle for some reason. It just It's a great flowing map. It's perfect for assault or capture the flag. There is no better map than Zanzibar for these two. It's a great map for basically whatever you want. Whether it be a custom game like Zombies, Deathmatch, Assault. Yeah, you name it. It's, it's a great map for all of them. It's well balanced. It gives vehicles to the people on the beach. And it gives maybe one or two to the people at the main base. But they also have a lot more fortification. But on the other end, the beach people have better weapons. So it's all about how you play, how you mix, and where you go to make your final stand. I have to give Zanzibar a 9 out of 10. Zanzibar is probably one of the most perfect maps in existence. I just don't know of a game type that I wouldn't want to play on it. Uh, maybe Oddball? I, I don't know. Uh, I think Oddball is alright. 
Uh, I thought Territories was really underrated on this map, uh, playing with uh, four plots. But where it really shined for me was Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag was so much fun. Just starting out on the beach with just a few vehicles and a sniper up on the little walkway there. And fighting your way into their base and opening the gate, which was certain, certainly a strategic advantage if you could do it. It's tough, but if you can do it, you can get your vehicles in there. You can get right up to the flag. Zanzibar was awesome. I mean, I want to see a remake of it again. I know they remade it once, but I want to see another one because I had so much fun with it. I gave it a 10 out of 10. I'm going to go ahead now and say I'm also giving it a 10 out of 10. And the reasons I'm going to go with that is uh, it was it was perfect for what it was made for. It is what everybody wanted to do. It was the, the Halo version of Storming the Beach, you know, for... For Capture the Flag and Assault, it was perfect. Um, obviously, it didn't work out so well for multi-flag or anything like that, but it wasn't designed to, and I'm not trying to say that that's okay, except you got to have things that are designed for this, uh, for this. And it did it. It was perfect. From the windmill, which seemed a little weird, you know, it doesn't make sense really, but it added a lot of style to the gameplay, um, to the opening the gate inside the base that didn't seem terribly useful most of the time, but occasionally, as soon as you open that, a warthog would go flying in, grab the flag, and go flying back out, and there's nothing the team could do about it. Um, so it, it just had things like that that could just change the tides of war. And uh, I think the other thing about Zanzibar is it, in itself, was a team-building exercise. I mean, you knew when a team was really a team playing on that map. You would see that just one person would run across from the base and try to get to the sniper before the other team could and get back. And you'd see somebody else going straight for um, what's on the other side, the, the shotgun and the, the rockets up top. And the I think somebody would usually stay in the base just in case somebody rushed and that kind of thing. It, it just seemed to, to force teamwork. And I love that. I, I, I personally love team-based games like that I don't really like to play free for all or by myself so being able to just go onto a map and know that you got to yell out what you're going to do right away I remember as soon as the game was picked people would just start saying I'm going for this I'm going for this and I think I think I would love to see this map again I don't care if it was already redone uh, a 10 out of 10 man what is there to cover that you guys have not covered? Zanzibar is definitely the quintessential Halo 2 map. I might, I may like some more, but this kind of defines Halo 2. If you had to pick a map to define Halo 2, Zanzibar is it. I love... I mean, when you think asymmetrical gameplay for 4 versus 4 or even 8 versus 8, this is it. This is... I think it does it so well, so perfect... I really can't think of anything to make it better. I will say the whole reason for the windmill, which you guys said didn't really make much sense or you didn't understand, I do think it's a power plant or supposed to be some sort of power plant given the setup. I mean... Yeah, but that wasn't defined until Halo 3. Yeah, I'm just saying, it. I think the way the base is set up kind of makes it seem like that. I mean, the, I mean, the windmill itself, I should say, isn't really a windmill. It's just a giant wheel, basically, to generate power. Honestly, but, if the creators just looked at each other and said, you know, it'd be great if we got a giant ass windmill. I'm totally okay with the way they did it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it, it really doesn't need to make sense to work well for gameplay or have, or offer a great experience. I'm just saying that's what I, that that's the impression I got off just by the way it's designed. Um, but yeah, I, I love the way Zanzibar works. I love the whole layout. I love the gate system, how you can choose whether you want to open the gate. I mean, as a, as a defensive team, you can choose to open it to give them, kind of give them something to come through and hopefully, like, to kind of egg them on to come through that way or to bring a vehicle into your own base, maybe. But obviously, it's made more for the attackers to go in there and open it for their own vehicles, which I think works really well. One flag, one bomb, definitely... I mean, if you think... If you say Headlong is the best large map for one bomb, one flag, or I guess one bomb mainly, then Zanzibar has got to be the best medium to medium large map for it. It just works so well. I remember wanting to play this over and over and over just because 
it never offered a poor experience. It never offered a bad experience. Even Slayer was pretty fun on this. Snipers was pretty fun on this. Just, but obviously, objective is the main, the main thing you're gonna want to play on this, and it works so well. I love the web. I love how there's a sniper on each end. Any map where they offer you two snipers, one for each team, I think plays usually pretty well. But yeah, uh, obviously, I'm not gonna say anything more that already hasn't been said. So rather than repeat everything you guys said, I'm just gonna agree with you. Ten out of ten for sure. Like I said, quintessential Halo Two map. This defines Halo 2, in my opinion. So let's wrap up the ratings. Austin? Well, I guess I'm the odd man out this time. I think Stefan just wanted to be spiteful. I voted 9 out of 10. I gave it a 10 out of 10, and don't forget, this map started the search for Ling Ling's head. <laughs> ben? I gave it a 10 out of 10. And I gave it a 10 out of 10 as well. It doesn't really get much better than that for Halo 2. Obviously, we... Now let's break into, obviously, our just overall view of the game and our overall rating of the uh, the game's maps, just in general. Um, I guess I'll start it off. I think Zanzibar, or not Zanzibar, scratch that. Check that. <laughs> I think, in general, Halo 2 has the best maps to offer. I mean, when you compare, I mean, obviously, we're just comparing them to Halo 1, what we've offered before, but... When you when you compare the two, it's just no comparison. Halo One offered, yeah, it offered some good maps, like maybe maybe a th a third or a fourth of them I'd love to see again. Whereas Halo Two offers more. I mean, I if you if you had to ask me which ones I would want to see back, it'd be easier to say which ones I didn't want to see back. I can think of maybe two: Gemini and Backwash. And that's not because I don't want to see something like Backwash. It's because I don't want to see Backwash itself. I, I would like a spiritual successor to Backwash. I mean, even even Desolation was a step up from Halo 1's maps. So it just goes to show that this it did do it better. I would love to see something like Desolation. Maybe not Desolation itself. So yeah, I think maybe three maps that I wouldn't care for at all from this game. But yeah, overall, I would give Halo 2's maps an easy 9 out of 10. I think it's going to be hard to beat halo 2's maps going forward because there's just so much there to offer from the small maps to the big maps like you said matt if you're gonna pick big maps from any game pick them from halo 2 i would love to see waterworks zanzibar um to or not tombstone oh dear god not tombstone oh okay. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa careful there terminal um headlong for sure coagulation even again and containment. I don't. I don't think I'd prefer coagulation over a lot of these other ones because we've already seen it so much. But I mean, I wouldn't even mind burial mounds. But yeah, overall nine out of ten for sure. Give me lockout again, please. Halo Two was the original Xbox game. If you were playing online on the Xbox, you were playing Halo Two, and everybody on your friends list was playing Halo Two. And I think the maps are largely accountable for that i mean the maps are so memorable and so much fun to play on they kept people playing pretty much throughout the entire career of halo 2 once you got it that's all you played and you had fun doing it i uh i can't really remember a lot of the halo 1 maps so i can't really compare the two but the halo 2 maps out of all the series that i have played are the best there's so many that I would like to see back, and I can understand that you can't bring them all back, and you don't want to bring them all back. But there are some that I really wish they'd bring back. Just in general, I would love to see a Waterworks remake. I'd love to see another Headlong remake. I'd have to rate the maps a 10 out of 10. I just, I love them. There are a few mistakes, but what what aren't there? Uh, I would agree with both of you as to say that Halo 2 probably had the strongest multiplayer maps, mostly because it seems like with uh, Reach and maybe Halo 3, but mostly Halo Reach, where like they had to take it from campaign, or it had to have this certain aspect, or it has to serve this purpose, whereas this was just like, well, why don't we put a windmill in there? It'll be fun. And that's what they did. They just made sure it was fun. And if I had to pick just two maps to see come back, I would pick Waterworks and Containment. I think Waterworks would be amazing in Forge, 
And I think if you brought us back containment and started us off with like a DMR instead of, you know, the SMG you had in Halo 2, I think it would be near perfect. These maps are great. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. These maps were not even comparable to Halo 1. Halo 1 didn't have anything even remotely like these. Um, it seemed like almost all of them even had some kind of um, moving something. I mean, whether it was a gate or a windmill or whatever, it seemed like they they didn't just want to put little boxes that people could fight each other in. They clearly had ideas in mind, and I think they, they did very well. Um, it's just no comparison at all to Halo 1. It's if I was Halo One, I'd be embarrassed if Halo Two came out around the same time. I would, I would just feel awful. I think that these maps, um, there's not even a lot to improve on. Um, yeah, there's a few bad apples, but there always is. Um, and if if they weren't there, I suppose nothing would really look outstanding because they were all amazing. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and just say 9 out of 10, not because I don't think they're they're amazing, but because I suppose there's got to be room for improvement. They, they could somehow get better. Cool. All right, and to wrap this up, let's all list our favorite big map, favorite small map, and least favorite map overall in general. So, uh, Austin, why don't you start it off? My favorite large map had to be Waterworks. If I could only choose one map to be remade, it would have to be this one. Favorite medium size, Zanzibar, hands down, storming the beach, operations match. It's got to be that one. Lockout, great size, small map. Good to fun, play on. And uh, the map I hate would have to be Gemini. I would say Waterworks is my favorite large map. Uh, Zanzibar edges out Colossus for a medium-sized map. Midship, by far, my favorite small map. Even though I called it tiny, I don't think they ever classified tiny maps, so it's my favorite small map. And Gemini, I, I hate. Gemini can just go away. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Um, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you guys on... Uh, well, I, I, I'm assuming you said Waterworks earlier. Really stop paying attention. But I know Austin said it. Uh, Waterworks would be the one I want to see back. It wasn't necessarily my favorite big one, but honestly, it's the one I want to see back because it's the one they haven't done. Uh, that in containment, but I didn't care for that. But I think Waterworks would be awesome to bring back. Um, a lot of a lot of things they could, I don't know, do to spice that up and make it amazing. Um, as for mid-sized, I would go with Zanzibar for obvious reasons. Of I think that's a perfect map. I think that. It was surprisingly even for being an asymmetric map, or, or not asymmetric. Uh, yeah, no, that's right. Just not, uh, not anything I could change about it. I I like that map a lot. I think it played too well. Um, for small maps to be brought back, Lockout is so obvious that I'm not gonna go with it. it it's they're gonna put pieces of that in Forge in probably every Forge type world thing they're gonna do. I'm gonna assume that it's already brought back by whoever feels like making it. I wouldn't mind seeing Elongation again, something like that. That was a small map, but it was kind of fun. I, I kind of miss it. I like the conveyor belts. I, I don't know if they they would need those. The layout was interesting enough. Uh, I think that's what I'd want to see again, uh, some kind of remake. Um, as for one I hate, I'm more than done with Beaver Creek and anything like it, or Battle Creek or whatever. Um, I, I never really loved those, and I don't want to see them again. All right. Um, my favorite large one in Halo 2 would probably be Headlong. I just... Waterworks is great, but Headlong is just my favorite map from... I mean, lar in terms of the larger size maps, Headlong just was so much fun in so many ways. Uh, medium size, got to go Zanzibar. I mean, I don't know how anybody else could pick something different. Just such a great map for so many reasons. And small map, my favorite was Lockout, by far. Least favorite, we're going to go Gemini, just because I just, out of all the maps, I can't. I mean, even even Backwash was better than Gemini. Even Desolation was better than Gemini. Gemini just did not do it for me at all. All right, so cool. That wraps things up for uh, the Halo 2 retrospective review. 
And yeah, it's gonna gonna be hard to beat these maps, I'm sure for all of us. We all rated this pretty high, all nines and a ten, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how the Halo 3 maps and Halo Reach maps hold up to this. So I guess uh, we'll talk to you guys next week, and we'll be doing the Halo 3 re map retrospective. So if you want to find Matt stuff, where could you do that? You can find us at facebook.com slash 3 combo podcast. You can email us at 3 combo podcast at gmail.com. Search us on YouTube, 3 combo podcast, and find us at gpxgaming.net. All right, sweet. And uh, if you want to find our stuff, you can find us at facebook.com slash goombastomp or youtube.com slash goombastomp show. Or you could just come to my house. Uh, I don't have a podcast, but I've decided that my house will be the best way to find my stuff. <laughs> yeah. If you would like to find any of Ben Leahy's stuff, be it a used tampon or whatever, you know, <laughs> here's his address. No, just kidding. But yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye. Bye. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen.